have to show me some grace as I get used to doing these videos. The For me, the openings and the endings are very awkward. I'm, I don't mean to be tense and, or uptight or awkward. I'm just going to have to have time to get over that, I guess. So I'm saying all of that to say this. <laughs> this intro is for a video that you're getting ready to see. Um, I forgot to just record the intro for this video. I don't know what in the world I was thinking. Um, not that it's a bad thing just to get right on into it, but half my head is cut off. And it just seems like most of the time you just see me stir in the pot, but I promise you <laughs> this stew is really, really, really good. It is a check wagon stew and it is so so good. Once again, I paired it with my um, Dutch oven bread, but I made some Bavarian brownies as well for the dinner that night. You will see those in a different video. Um, but I think it's a pretty good video for you to watch, not just for the recipe, but because I tell you a little bit and I about why I buy the cuts of meat that I do, and you'll see me prep it for the freezer. So with all of that awkwardness said, let's get on into this video. Okay, I have got about a pound and a half of meat here, beef. You can use stew meat if you like. I don't typically buy stew meat unless I find a really good special because you're paying for them to cut it up for you. So what I do is buy a big chunk and this was something. It is a beef bottom round roast. And it's four pounds. I just cut it into four pieces. It's a little over four pounds. So I just cut it into four pieces, got it as equal as I could. And I cut it up myself. And the thing about the stew meat, most of the time there's great big chunks in there and I end up having to cut those apart anyway. So why not just cut it myself? In this bowl, I've got about a quarter of a cup of flour, some salt and pepper. We're gonna dredge our meat in this. And I've already got my Dutch oven behind me and we are going to brown this. So let me get this dredged up and we'll go over to the stove and we're gonna have to do that quickly because it's already going getting my Dutch oven heated up. You want that really good and hot because you want to get a good sear on this meat and sear in the juices. Do not throw your flour away. Whoopsie. Puppy's almost got a treat. Whoops. <laughs> Try to keep yours in the bowl for crying out loud. Seriously, third time's charm. All right. We're going to take this over to the Dutch oven and get it browned up. I've got about two tablespoons, one to two tablespoons of olive oil in this bottom of this pan, just enough to coat the bottom. I don't want this to stick. I'm gonna add the beef. I am going to add it all at once, just because I need to get it going. It would cook better if I probably spit, split this up. I don't wanna spit it up. Might do that later if it doesn't taste any good. Again, don't throw this away. We're gonna use that. We're gonna get this meat browned up and then we're gonna add some other ingredients. this is browning I'm gonna go ahead and add my next two ingredients and that is a medium onion chopped 
This is more than a medium onion. I don't like to do food prep. So I will use this throughout the week for other recipes. But I also need a couple of cloves of garlic. And I'm just using this that I get at Walmart. Couple of cloves, little extra. Bam, you know how it goes. If you haven't ever cooked with this before, I love the way this makes my beef taste. And I'm just, this is not part of the recipe. I just like it. And every once in a while, I'll add just a little bit of it while it's browning my meat because it is a browning and seasoning sauce. And I think it'll just give it a good flavor. Again, you don't have to use it if you don't want to. Now remember I told you to save that flour, not throw it away. Because we are going to add an undrained jar or can of chopped tomatoes into that flour. and then it's gonna be added to our meat mixture. And this will help thicken that up because this is a stew, not a soup. And the juice from these tomatoes is gonna help get all of those brown bits. This off the bottom of our pot. Okay. Because that's some of the best tasting stuff is the little bits that are on the bottom of the pan. All right. That made a great gravy. I've never made this before. This is a recipe I'm trying. I found the recipe, but I've changed it up quite a bit. So I'm doing my own thing. I'm still not claiming the recipe though. I don't mean that. All right, now we're gonna add some seasonings. We need some more salt. I'm gonna add about a half a teaspoon of salt half to a teaspoon. Salt and pepper and any of these seasonings as far as I'm concerned are all to taste. But I'm gonna start there, let it cook, and then we'll see if we need to add any more. So salt, quarter of a teaspoon to a half a teaspoon of pepper. Gonna add some basil, half to a teaspoon. I'm gonna add some celery seed, about a half. And just about a quarter of, I don't like a lot of heat in my food. And this recipe calls for cayenne. So about a quarter to a half. 
is all I can handle. All right, and the last thing we're going to add, I'm gonna to have to get out because I forgot to get it. But that is Worcestershire sauce. We're gonna add about a tablespoon of Worcestershire. The sauce that everyone loves to say. All right, we are going to turn this down to a simmer and we're gonna let it simmer like this for about an hour. That smells really good. All right. And we'll just stir it every once in a while. I'm gonna add something else that the recipe didn't call for. I'm gonna add in some mushrooms. And it doesn't really need any more thickening, but I'm going to add in a package of mushroom gravy. You don't have to add this if you don't have it. Because this has also got mushroom pieces in it. All right. I just think for a recipe like this, being a chuck wagon stew, that the mushrooms will be good. All right. Cover, simmer for an hour. yet been an hour but I cut my stew meat or my meat up fairly small let's give this a stir real quick looks so good and it smells amazing it's got a really good gravy going in here I'm gonna go ahead and add the potato that is three potatoes because mine were pretty small. The recipe calls for two, but again, I'm making this my own. I'm just gonna stir those in there. Yeah, I think that's plenty of potato. And the last thing it calls for is A 10 ounce package of mixed vegetables. Now, this is a really old recipe. And the recipe called, used to you could get green giant veggies like this in a butter sauce. I can't get those in my area anymore. So those are just plain on mixed veggies. And the camera is in front of it. <laughs> but I'm going to add, I'm just gonna add a couple of tablespoons of butter to take the place of that butter sauce. Let me grab my butter real quick. You don't have to be quiet, babe. <laughs> They know you exist. Uh -huh. They know you exist. They just never seen you. Have they seen you? No. Mm. All right. So that butter, in my mind, 
is just going to take place of the butter sauce that would have been in those veggies. And I'm just going to let this cook until the potatoes are done, the meat's done, and those were frozen veggies. So they might be a little crisp tender, but that looks amazing. If you don't want yours this thick, you could add some beef broth or even just some water. Up to you. Y'all, don't be intimidated by a recipe. Do your own thing. Improvise if you don't have something. Improvise, use something different. But there we go. We're gonna let that finish cooking. I'll bring you back when it's done. It's been sitting here for a few minutes, but man, is it still really hot. What do you think? Good? Very good. Very tasty. Mm-hmm. Good hearty meal for a cold day. Absolutely. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> that meat is so tender. Mm -hmm. For me, that cayenne gives it just a little bit of a kick. You probably, I know, I, I see you smiling. <laughs> Adam can handle heat. I cannot. This is really good. Mm. Mm -mm 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 -mm. This is still my favorite. <laughs> I love this spread. Mm. This spread is so good. This stew is real. Cat. Scratching my chairs. This stew is really good. I can't decide. <laughs> Do you like it this way better or just regular beef stew? No, this is, this is, I love this recipe. Awesome. You like Worcestershire sauce a lot. And I can taste that in here too. Okay. Mmm. Mmm. Yeah, really good. It is really good. I will definitely make this again. Absolutely. I will say, next time I probably won't put as much cayenne in it. <laughs> this would be good with some barley in it. I love barley. I think it would be good with some barley in it. Mm -hmm. This is really, really, really good. Mm. Okay, y'all, we're gonna eat our dinner. There's about eight and a half minutes left on the brownies, but that's a different video. I hope you enjoyed this. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Be sure and subscribe. I've got a bunch, a bunch, a bunch of recipes coming up. I've got some canning to do. So be sure you hit the subscribe button and ring the bell notification so you know when those come out. And I will see you next time. God bless. Got something on my eyelash. I can see it. Probably a breakdown. Okay. Mm -hmm.